Hello, Columbine, and welcome to our service of worship today. We're so glad that you are joining in. Today, we are wrapping up our series on August, the month of movies, and I'm so excited about today. Joe has just made awesome music selections that I'm excited to share with you, and then also Steve's message on the movie Harriet. Um, looking at the life of Harriet Tubman, who, wow, such a brave brave pioneer and soul. Um, and so excited to celebrate her life and highlight the lessons of her life and in the movie, Harriet, a freedom of liberation. So you're in for a treat today. Glad to have you. I have a couple of announcements um, just to kind of keep us all together as a community. So first of all, really, we celebrate that we closed on the mortgage. So to finalize financing for the building on this last Thursday. So the last thing we need is the final permit. Go ahead on construction inside, um, which will be here any day. So um, construction is just imminent, and we are so excited. Thank you for your patience. Um, and it's been a it's been a challenge waiting this summer, but um, we have been actively working in lots of other details as we've also been waiting to start. So excited about that. Keep that project in your prayers. Thank you for all of you who continue to give to that project. This is a uh, faith giving practice, right, of when we don't even see what's happened yet. Um, a couple other things. If you were a parent of youth, middle school or senior high, Samantha, our new children and families director, um, is hosting an information meeting tonight. So that is Sunday, August 30th at Clement Park. Enter near the library, and it's at the pavilions there at 5.30. A chance to connect, hear, uh, ask questions, and hear about the vision for the year and what programs will be like, even in this COVID season. So I hope you can go to that. Um, also, fun news on Sunday the 13th of September, which would normally be our rally kickoff Sunday, um, we again, have to reinvent what we're doing, but we're going to do an outdoor service to Clement at 9 a.m. on that Sunday. So we hope that you can join us. We'll also have some online option that morning for those of you who are still um, really feel better about being at home. So there will be both options. But for those of you who are wanting to gather and connect, we'll be at Clement on the 13th at 9 a.m. Finally, this fall um, on Labor Day weekend, we are kicking off a new series we're going to be looking at a Brian McLaren book called We Make the Road by Walking It. One of the ways is this book is written really to connect small group discussion questions. The chapters are super short, and um, we are looking for more people who are willing to host either in person at your house, outdoors, or um, online discussion groups. We have about four leaders so far. I'm leading one, Steve will lead one. But... Um, if you would be interested in leading a discussion group that would meet this fall, we find that that is a great way for us to stay connected in this COVID season and to have some new relationships with people um, that we can get to know better and learn from as we discuss topics. So I'd encourage you, if you'd be willing to lead a group, let me know. You can email me. And um, or signups will be coming out soon for those groups to join them. As always, um, Steve and I and the staff are available to you. Reach out to us if you're wanting to connect. Um, we've been doing calls as well to reach out to you, but um, there's a lot of you. So let us know if there's a way we can be supporting or connecting with you in this COVID season. For you are with us in our prayers and our hearts as we continue to shape this ministry together. All right. Thanks for being here with us. Enjoy this time. And um, here is our first song from Joe, which is a favorite of mine from Bob Marley. Hey, CUC. Um, we're going to share a song. Well, I'm going to share a song. Ari's going to be here and listen. If she sings along, that'll be amazing. Well, that'll be the first time that would ever happen. But uh, I'm going to sing as we uh, uh, pursue this idea of um, liberation um, and also think about the black experience. Um, you know, obviously, as a black man in America, I I fight for liber further liberation. I'm also, what I'm able to do with my life and the life I'm able to live is built on 
those uh, before me who have fought for, for liberation. And um, I fight not just for myself, but for my daughter who's uh, wearing this beautiful uh, um, onesie we got her. Yeah. Which uh, says uh, black history in the making. Uh, you can take my word for it. Um, but this this song that I'm going to sing uh, by Bob Marley is um, has meant a lot to me for a very long time. I've never actually covered it before, um, but I kind of knew all the words anyway. Um, Bob Marley's house was just down the road from my high school. I, I, I walked past it millions of times, and even though this song was written in the nineteen you know nineteen eighty around when he he died. Um, it continues to be so relevant today. Um, it's a song of black liberation. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, it sounds like we should just get right to singing, so. Oh, pirates, yes, they ride by So night to the virgin ships Minutes after they took I from the bottomless pit, but my hand was made strong by the hand of the Almighty. We forward in this generation triumphantly. Won't you help to sing? songs of freedom cause all I ever have redemption songs emancipate yourself from mental slavery none but ourselves can free our minds have no fear for atomic energy cause none of them can stop the time Just a part of it We've got to fulfill the book Won't you help to sing These songs of freedom Cause all I ever have Yeah, redemption songs Redemption songs yourself from mental slavery none but ourselves can free our mind whoa have no fear for atomic energy cause none of them can stop the time how long shall they kill our prophets while we stand aside and look some say it's just a part of it Got to fulfill the book. Won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? Cause all I ever have redemption songs. All I ever have. Oh, oh, oh. redemption songs. My name is Samantha, and I'm so excited to be here for children's time with you. Today, we're going to look at the story of Moses, a man in the Bible who freed slaves from their slave owners. 
we're talking about Moses today because in the movie Harriet that Pastor Steve is going to talk about, she was often referred to as Moses because she would go and free people from their slave owners here in America. Let's read the story together. Moses Crosses the Red Sea, a story of faith and courage. I said, hurry, shouted an Egyptian guard, cracking his whip at an old man struggling to lift a large block of stone. All around, as far as the eye could see, thousands of Hebrew men, women, and children toiled in the hot desert sun. The sting of the overseer's whips on their backs. They were slaves of Pharaoh, the supreme ruler of Egypt. Brick by brick and block by heavy stone block, the Hebrews worked to build the temples and monuments for Pharaoh. But the Hebrew people were God's people. They cried out to God to rescue them. So God chose Moses, a Hebrew who had grown up as a prince of Egypt to deliver them. This is the story of how Moses, a man of faith and courage, led the Hebrew people out of the land of Egypt. Let my people go, Moses said to Pharaoh, as he stood on the banks of the river Nile. But Pharaoh refused and sent his guards to capture Moses. As the guards came closer, Moses looked at his staff and remembered God's word at the burning bush. With this staff, you shall do my wonders. But Pharaoh would not let the Hebrews go. And it continued for several more days as a plague of frogs and insects and darkness came because Pharaoh would not let his people go. Then God sent the tenth punishment, and it was the worst of all. As weeping filled all of Egypt, Pharaoh sent for Moses and said, You and your people have my permission to go. Moses hurried from the palace. The Hebrews must leave quickly before Pharaoh changed his mind. Moses, once a prince of Egypt, but now the deliverer of God's people, led growing numbers of Hebrew people through the winding streets. At last they reached the gates of Egypt. Then they went through them to freedom. The people wound their way through the desert, down valleys and around hills, at last they came to the Red Sea. But as the people were resting, an unmistakable sound echoed through the camp, an Egyptian horn. With each blast of the horn, the people grew more afraid. Fearful, they turned to Moses and shouted, we're trapped here, how can we escape? What do we do now? As Moses looked from the Hebrew people to the Egyptian chariots and then to the Red Sea, his courage sank. He walked to the edge of the sea, looked at the staff in his hand, and then up to heaven. Once again, he remembered God's words. With the staff, you shall do my wonders. With new courage, Moses turned to the Hebrews and said, do not be afraid. God will fight for you. And so God's miracle began. The Hebrew people drew back in amazement. As the water surged and parted, a pathway appeared between two towering walls of water clutching their belongings. The Hebrews hurried down into the sea. As the waters towered above them, the Hebrews scrambled up on the banks of the other shore just in time. 
clouds of dust signaled the arrival of the Egyptian soldiers at the water's edge. So they went into the parted waters. At last, God saw the soldiers and sent the walls of water around them, covering the Egyptian army. The Hebrew people were saved. They sang praises to God, knowing that God had sent the courageous Moses to lead them to freedom. Having seen all of God's miracles, the Hebrews now felt courage in their hearts as they looked forward to the journey to the promised land. Courage means doing what you know is right. And it is not always easy to show courage. It was not easy for Moses to tell Pharaoh to let the people go. Moses knew that Pharaoh was a very powerful ruler. He could have had Moses thrown in jail or worse. But no, Moses knew that facing Pharaoh was the right thing to do. Moses also knew that God would give him the courage he needed because he was doing the right thing. And so the Hebrew people were freed. There will be times when you need to show courage, when you will need to do what you know is right. Ask God for courage. Hello, my name is Haley Wimbush, and I am the new business manager for Columbine United Church. And I am so excited to be a part of this amazing congregation. I will be leading us in our take a breath moment. So I invite you to find peace wherever you are this morning, this afternoon, or this evening. Close your eyes and just breathe in and exhale. Be present in this moment. Come all who are weary of wealth, of poverty, of power, of struggle, of division. Come all who are heavy laden with too much, with too little, with anxiety, with fear, with anger. Come all who have hope for liberation, for peace, for freedom, for the kingdom. Hear these words. See, I am making all things new. Please join me in this opening prayer. Jesus, you have reached across the ethnic boundaries between Samaritan, Roman, and Jew. You have offered fresh sight to the blind and freedom to the captives. Help us to break down the barriers in our community. Enable us to see the reality of racism and bigotry and free us to challenge and uproot it in ourselves, our society, and our world. Amen. Hello everybody, it's great to be back from vacation. I had a wonderful two weeks. My first week I spent at home doing all kind of chores. My second week I spent up in the mountains with Phoebe and the kids, riding horses, cutting wood, having a great time. I want to thank Jill and the staff for giving you a wonderful presentation of ministry over the past couple of weeks, but it's great to be back. It's great to be back in the saddle. Hey, I'm up here on Mount Lindo. Mount Lindo is one of my favorite places to come. I love the views of Denver and the foothills. Although uh, it's been so smoky these past uh, past several weeks, it feels like the whole state is on fire. I could use uh, use some rain right now. I could even use some snow. Okay, not snow. That'll come soon enough. But rain. We need some rain to help put out some of these fires. But I love coming up here even with the smoke because it allows my thoughts to soar a little bit, to think, to expand, to wonder about life and the world and who I am and where I'm going because it's got me thinking a lot about Columbine United Church and who we are and where we're going. What's the vision for our lives together? That's what I've been thinking a lot about. What's the vision for our lives together? God's been playing with me. God's been working on me. God's been uh, having me think a lot. You know, it could just be that I'm on my last curve of ministry. I, you know, I don't know how many years I've got to go. You know, 
four years, five years, six years, you know, it's really not my timing necessarily, but I'm trying to be open to God's timing. And I've been asking God, what is God, what is your vision for me and for my life? And the same way, since we're so intertwined, it makes me think about what is our vision for Columbine United Church and our life together. You know, and when I think about uh, the vision for the church, I'm thinking beyond who we are in the midst of our renovation. You know, the renovation, let's talk about this for just a moment. I know that some of you are really frustrated that the, that the construction hasn't started yet. Let me explain. You know, we've had some real trouble with our mortgage company getting the finances lined up. Uh, we've finally have got that set up. Now we're having trouble getting the building permit. That'll happen. You know, I have to remind us, it's not on our timing, it's on God's timing. You know, we set plans and sometimes God laughs at us a little bit. You know, I think instead what we need to do is to be patient and be creative about how we interact and how we have ministry with one another. I need to encourage you to do more than just watch a video on Sunday morning, but to join a small group, join an adult education class, sign up to call other church members to see how they're doing. There's so many new ways that we need to be connected. You know what the renovation is showing us that our ministry has got to be more than just the building. Our focus has got to be more than just the building. The renovation is showing us we need to branch out and look at ministry in different ways. So for me, my vision is not just limited to the building. My vision is also just not limited to COVID-19. You know, I really am trying to think beyond COVID-19. I know that sometime in the future, we will be able to meet together. We will be able to meet together and worship together and celebrate together indoors. You know, right now we can meet outside, we can meet in small groups, we can meet in people's backyards, but you know what? We can't meet inside in a large group. When is that going to happen? sometime in 2021. I don't really see it happening over the next several months, but I think sometime in the beginning of next year, it will be possible for us to come back together. Again, not our timing, God's timing. And we have to be patient with that. Again, COVID-19 should encourage us to be creative in ministry and what it looks like to come and, uh, to come together as followers of Jesus, as children of God. So my vision for who we are goes beyond COVID-19, goes beyond the limitations of our building renovation. And I've been thinking in bigger ways. I've been trying to think about where is God leading us now? And you know, this is what I keep on hearing from God. I keep on hearing from God to be completely and totally inclusive of all of God's people. Now I love that. Totally inclusive of all of God's people. Now you might be a little bit shocked by that because already we're pretty inclusive. I mean if you think about it we embrace all the world religions. All world religions are welcome. We're people that embrace all people regardless of gender. We have people from all over the GLBTQI uh, spectrum. People of all genders are welcome at Columbine United Church. We say that people are welcome of all races. That's there. It's in our mission statement. But what if God is asking us to take the next step with that? to really go beyond that, to really become a congregation that embraces and integrates people of all races and all cultures. Now, some people say we can't do that because we're a white congregation living in the middle of a white suburb. We're going to draw primarily white people. I get that. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in the sermon. But you know what? I want to go beyond that because I believe there is a bigger, broader rainbow of people that are invited to come to God's table. And I want to embrace that. I want us to see that happen at Columbine United Church. And how are we going to do that? You know, I think in vision. I think a big picture, but I think that it's going to take all of us working together to bring about a vision like this to happen. That's why I'm excited about this movie, Harriet, that I'm going to be preaching on today. We've been doing this whole sermon series on uh, movies at Columbine United Church. And today I want to talk about the movie Harriet, the story about Harriet Tubman. Now, Harriet 
The movie is fantastic. It portrays a wonderful, passionate woman, Harriet Tubman, and her desire for, uh, for freedom to bring an end to slavery, not just for herself, but to all people, and how she dedicates herself to making that happen. She brings her own self to freedom, and then she brings other people to freedom as well. And I think that when we understand Harriet's story and embrace it in the middle of our lives, that it gives us the passion it gives us the passion to embrace all people as a part of our ministry. So let's dive into the movie. Let me walk you through it. Uh, let me show you a couple of the different scenes that I find particularly moving. And then hopefully by the end, bring you back around to where I see God is embracing us to be a congregation, embracing all people. All right. So let's walk through the movie. What do you know about chains? Chains are heavy and black and dark. These are my tow chains that I have in my truck. I use them to haul logs, pull logs around. I use them to pull out stumps. Use them to wrap around heavy objects to keep them in place or to drag them somewhere else. Where did we ever get the idea that it was a good thing, even a holy thing, to wrap people up in chains? What is it like to live in chains? Well, you know, Harriet Tubman knew what it was like to live in chains. She grew up in chains, but yet she had the taste of freedom to break loose from these chains and discover a whole new life. So let me ask you, what do you know about Harriet Tubman? You know, most of what you learned about Harriet Tubman was probably in junior high or high school history class. Harriet lived in the years before the Civil War, 1850, 1840s, 1850s, 1860s. She was a slave on a southern plantation. She grew up as a slave, married a slave, and then she had the taste for freedom. She had the desire to go out and to live a free life. So she escaped the chains and ran to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. A year later, she felt the calling to go back into the South to free her family. She ended up freeing her family and other people, leading them to freedom. She began uh, became a part of the Underground Railroad, uh, setting up a pathway for, for slaves to leave slavery and enter into freedom in the North. She became a part of the Union troops. She became the only woman to lead Union troops into battle, where she uh, freed over 700 slaves through the Union troops. So a woman who knew about slavery, who knew about chains, and knew about breaking free from those chains and living a free life. You know, the Apostle Paul says, no longer submit to a yoke of slavery. That was the scripture passage today, one verse. But in that one verse, I think it says a lot. You know, we take that as like a spiritual metaphor, no longer submit to a yoke of slavery. Well, you know what? Harriet knew it personally. She felt it. She was weighed down by the yoke of slavery. No longer submit to the yoke of slavery, so she threw it off. Let me ask you a personal question. Where are you chained? Where do you need to be free? Where are you used wearing the yoke of slavery where you need to discover something new about yourself? Get personal. Maybe it's in your own life with your relationships, with your spouse or partner, with an adult child, with a parent, something that has gone uh, awry that has kept you in chains. Maybe you're chained to a bad job. Maybe you're chained to a negative self-emotion. Maybe you're chained to a negative view of God. Whatever it is, you need to hear Paul say, no longer submit to a yoke of slavery. Throw off the chains. Because you know what happens when we throw off the chains? We begin to discover something new about ourselves, something passionate about ourselves. We discover that we are indeed children of God. That's what I think about when I, we create a, a congregation. Look at my dirty hands from holding those chains. We begin to discover that we are an inclusive body of Christ, that we break free from any chains that might hold us back, and we literally live into a whole new understanding of what it means to be a universal body of Christ. I don't want to be chained to the past. I won't want to be chained to our old ideas. I want to throw off the chains and discover something new. And that's what Harriet did. She threw off the chains and she discovered something new. It's that same freedom that awaits all of us. Well, I'm sitting on my front deck with my flowers in the morning. I love sitting on my front deck. You know, uh, what I love about the movie Harriet is that it portrays a woman who has a deep 
passion for her life, a deep passion for what she's doing. But her passion is born out of her sense of faith. And that is what drives her. She literally, literally believes that God is leading every step that she's taking. God led her when she first fled. God is now leading her to go back down south to free other slaves, beginning with her husband and with her family. Now, I have a clip that I want to show you about uh, Harriet's deep faith. And uh, it's an interesting clip because she believes that God has led her down to free her husband from slavery to bring him back up to Pennsylvania. But when she gets down there, she finds that her husband has already remarried and has a child by his new wife. So she is heartbroken. She goes uh, to a tree and she falls down to the base of a tree and she pleads to God, why have you led me down here only to dash my hope? So let's watch this clip and I'll unpack it afterwards. Why, Lord? I listen for your voice. You told me to come. I came. You, you led me here. Why bring me all this way? Rub mud in my face. Why you let me live? So isn't that a powerful clip? What I love about it is that it shows Harriet's deep faith. But, but what is really profound is that it shows that God has a greater vision for Harriet. Harriet thought that she was just going to go down to take her husband from slavery and maybe her family. But God has a great vision for Harriet that Harriet is going to free hundreds of people. She's going to free hundreds of people from slavery. God has a greater vision from Harriet for Harriet, greater than the one that she realized. And isn't that true? Isn't that the way God works? God always has greater visions for us. You know, just think where you are in your life. You know, the, hopefully you're satisfied with your life. You're enjoying your life. You're enjoying your home and your family and your job. Maybe your retirement, your kids, wherever you are in your station of life, you're enjoying it. But I want you to know that wherever you are, God has greater visions for you right now. God has greater dreams. God has greater plans for you. God wants to take where you are right now and to expand you into a larger sense of who you are. God has a vision for you. And isn't that true for us at Columbine United Church? You know, we are pretty satisfied with who we are. We're in the middle of this great renovation. It's a kind of challenging us. I get that. I understand it. But God has a greater vision for us. We're expanding our knowledge of who we are. And wouldn't it be exciting if we understood this greater vision to be some of a congregation that was racially inclusive of all people? You know, we've come a long way to being an open and inclusive congregation. You know, just look where we are with gender equality. But you know, I remember the history of how we got there. We got there because we had a vision that God was leading us forward to a greater sense of who we are. And so it took about 15 years of talking and praying and studying and engaging one another, engaging other people in the community to get to a place where we could embrace this bigger sense of who we are. And could it be that maybe God is inviting us to have that same conversation now, and maybe it won't take 15 years. Maybe it'll only take five years. I'm hoping by the time I retire that we'll really be engaging in this conversation, that people of all races and colors will be able to come to Columbine United Church, or maybe more importantly, Columbine United Church will go to them. We can't always expect people to come to us. We have to be willing to go to them to engage a greater vision of who we are. Harriet was a person of great faith. May we also be people of a great faith. You know what I love about Harriet is that Harriet was a sparky person. Man, that passion made her sparky. She didn't accept any limitations. As soon as someone told her uh, she couldn't do something, she fired back, don't you tell me what I can't do. I have this great uh, little clip of, uh, of Harriet saying, don't you tell me what I can't do. So let's watch this clip. Harriet, I can't have you risking your life on this network because you're lonely. Rescuing slaves requires skill and careful planning. It requires reading, Harriet. 
Can you read a sign or a map? Can you read it all? I put my attention on trying to hear God's voice more clearly. Do you know what would happen if you got caught? They would torture you until you pointed them right to this office. You got lucky, Harriet. And there's nothing more you can do. Don't you tell me what I can't do. I made it this far on my own. God was watching, but my feet was my own. Running, bleeding, climbing, nearly drowned. Nothing to eat for days and days, man. I made it. So don't you tell me what I can't do. You don't know me. I love it. You know, there's this kind of this rebellious person inside of Harry that she's not going to be limited by by other people's views of of who she are, who she is, and what she can do. I mean, she has this greater sense, this greater desire to fulfill God's purpose. You know, I think we need to have that same sense of who we are. You know, we need to throw off any limitations. There's, we have to have a sense of being a rebellious teenager. You know, I always have the sense of a rebellious teenager inside me. As soon as someone tells me you can't do that. I always want to say, oh yeah, <laughs> you watch. Don't you tell me what I can't do. You know, I remember when we wanted to become a gender inclusive congregation, I had someone tell me once, you can't do that. You're living in the middle of a white suburb. There's no gay people in Littleton. I remember thinking to myself, well, how small-minded are you? How small-minded are you? I've had the same thing about people talk to me about becoming a racially inclusive congregation. And they've told me, you can't become a racially inclusive congregation. You live in the middle of white, uh, white Littleton. There's no people of color in Littleton. And I always want to say, you are so close-minded. Right down the road from Columbine United Church, not a mile down the road, we have a racially integrated community and yet we don't have a single church member coming from them to us what's the matter they we again need to go out to them we need to have an attitude that says don't tell me what I can't do I'm gonna go do it and I'm gonna show you that I can do it we need to have that same sense of sparkiness about us to engage this greater vision so I'm down here with my St. Francis in my memorial garden. All my animals are buried down here. Uh, cats and dogs and pigs and guinea pigs and everything from the kids' years. They've all come to rest down here. I love to come down here and rest and think and read the Bible. It's uh, one of my places. So in this scene, I want to uh, I want to show you a clip that uh, shows the passion and the anger of Harriet in the wake of the slavery. You know. The George Floyd murder set off a spark of passion and anger among the African American community. Actually, among all different communities, there was all type of unrest. A lot of uh, racial unrest, there were um, riots, there was violence, there was looting. And a lot of the white folks that I know of in this congregation uh, would come and talk to me and, and say, you know, they just didn't get it. They just didn't get the, the looting and the violence. Why, why would these people go to the uh, level where they were burning down their own neighborhoods. And, and you know, I, instead of just dismissing uh, the anger and the violence, I think when that happens, you need to try to come to understand it. You need to take the next step and really kind of understanding it. So, you know, uh, I talked with Joseph Noelis, our own minister of uh, worship, music, and fine arts. And he, he and I had a couple of really long uh, conversations, and he really kind of opened up the doors to understanding for me. And he turned me on to a podcast that uh, was an interview of a South African black historian. What the historian said, two things. He said, history is past and present, and that we literally have a foot in both worlds. There is the past. We lived in the past. We remember the past, and we bring that forward into the present. And so we literally are living in the past and in the middle of right now. And then he said, history is cyclical. That we're constantly going back and reviewing our past and an enlightenment of the past. We're bringing it to the future and living in the future. So, with those two things in mind, I watched. Uh, I watched Harriet, and I remember thinking about. The past is right now. There's a foot in both worlds. And I tried to watch the movie from the perspective of an African American, a black person. And you know what? I got in touch with something. I got in touch with an anger. I got in touch with a passion from the past, from watching this movie about slavery and coming free from slavery. I realized that I wanted to be free. I wanted to throw off anything that would bind me. And, and that remembering the past brought a sense of 
compassion, but even anger for the for the present that I'm living in. So I want to show you this clip of the movie that is a culmination, it is really the climax of the movie, where Harriet confronts her slave owner. It's kind of a long clip, it's about four minutes, but I want, to, want you to show it to you. I want to show it to you so you can understand the passion. Remember, the past is now and history is cyclical. Watch this clip. Name's Harriet. Toss your gun. Toss your gun. Off your horse. Off your horse. On your knees. The lap end like this. Are you good to stay with us? If only you knew how to behave. But you were unruly and untamed. I guess that's what I liked about you. And you liked me too. I know you did. Praying for me when I was sick. Asking God to keep me well. I asked God how a sickly little boy could think he owned me. I do own you, Mendy. Even now, you're mine. I was never yours, Gideon. I was never nobody's property. Ever since your daddy sold my sisters, I prayed for God to make me strong enough to fight. And that's what I prayed for ever since. I reasoned that there was one or two things I had it right to. Liberty, a death. If I couldn't have one, I'd have the other. You know what they're gonna do to you when they catch you. They will tear you limb from limb, tar you and burn you alive. And even if I'm out there to watch it, I can almost smell it now, like roasting pig. You're gonna die right here. On a freezing, blood-soaked battlefield. The moans of a generation of young men dying around you in agony for a lost cause, for a vile and wicked idea for the sin of slavery. Can you hear him? God don't mean people to own people, Gideon. You tried to destroy my family, but you can't. You tried to destroy my people, but you won't. God has shown me the future, and my people are free. My people are free!
So, I mean, moving scene. I mean, that is such a powerful scene. I love it. God don't mean people to own people. God doesn't mean people to own people. That's not a part of God's design. And if I'm, if I'm an African American, if I'm a black person living now, watching that movie, I feel this sense of unrest. Yes, I want to have the sense of freedom. You know, I think that this is the type of thing that we're gonna to need to be mindful of as we embrace what it means to be racially inclusive. We need to listen to the history of all people, whether that's African American or Latino or Asian or uh, any one of the uh, Native American. I really would love to reach out to the Native American community. That each one of these communities have a history that we need to understand and we need to embrace. God embraces all all people. God doesn't mean people to own people. God embraces all people to come to the table equally. So we began with vision and we end with vision. We end where we begin. Vision. You know, what got me thinking about having a racially inclusive congregation was a conversation I had with Jim Cummings. Jim and Judy Cummings are charter members of Columbine United Church. They were there when it began. They had a vision for what this congregation could do and could become way back in 1968. And Jim is still thinking, is still dreaming, still has a vision. He wrote me this email and he said, Steve, what can Columbine United Church to be can do to become racially inclusive. And he and I went back and forth on that. And I just love that. Here he is, mid 80s, still has energy, still has passion, still has drive, still has dreams for Columbine United Church. And I thought to myself, if Jim can have those kind of dreams, then why can't I? If Jim can have that vision, then why can't all of us? Because you know, I think Jim's vision tapped in to God's vision for us. That's what I want to do. You know, I really believe that the renovation and the, the reason why it's taking so long might be God's way of teaching us, you know what? Your ministry is bigger than your building. And God is teaching us you need to think bigger and broader about who you are as a congregation. And maybe COVID-19 is teaching us not to live in fear, but to be courageous in the face of the virus, reaching out to one another in new and creative ways. See, I think that's the key reaching out to one another in new and creative ways. What we're realizing is that ministry is not only face-to-face, -face, but ministry is online. Ministry is virtual. So we have to find a way to, to do both, to connect with one another, and that maybe we need to be creative in reaching out to new people. That's God's vision for us. That's what I want to embrace. That's what I want to live. Hey, let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Loving God, we come to you on this beautiful day just grateful to be alive. We're grateful for the many gifts that you've given to us, and we celebrate the abundance of your table. We come today, O oh God, mindful of all the people who are suffering from the COVID virus. We pray for those who have been diagnosed, those who are in the hospital. We pray for those who have died and their families left behind to grieve. O oh God, we pray for our men and women in uniform, those who are serving here and around the world. We pray that you would keep them safe, and we pray for their families left behind here in the States. Oh God, you have given us a vision, a vision to create an inclusive table. And we have tried to be faithful in fulfilling that vision, but now give us the strength and the passion to take the next step. Oh God, your son gave us a prayer to pray 2,000 years ago, and Christians ever since have been joining together and praying this prayer. So now let us bow our heads and join our voices. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, to conclude the service, Joseph has a great song, a very powerful song that, uh, that he wants to uh, play for us. And so, Joseph, why don't you introduce this beautiful song to us? I was so excited when Steve selected the hymn Harriet for our uh, movie series. Uh, this movie features the life of black freedom fighter Harriet Tubman, 
Um, and since he selected this movie, we've had many uh, meaningful conversations about li liberation and the black American experience in this country. Uh, when I started thinking about music that would um, suit this theme really well, uh, I got to, um, my, well, my mind made a beeline for a video which has been helping me and continues to help me uh, process and deal with the murder and killing of George Floyd. Um, uh, this video is a rendition of the hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing, which is uh, widely considered to be the Black National Anthem. And uh, the, the video features some of the most, it's actually a virtual choir performance of some of the most transcendent Black American uh, opera stars uh, today. Um, many of which I've followed their careers for years, and, and some of which I've had the pleasure of collaborating with in the past. Um, before we hear this in, in, uh, incredible rendition, I, I thought it'd be best just to kind of read uh, some of the words from this hymn, from our United Methodist hymnal. Um, and so here they are. Lift every voice and sing, till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. Let's hear this incredible rendition now. Hello everyone. It's time for the Purple Robe Song Series. And the theme for today is a song that can get me through a hard time. And the song I have chosen is Roland Carter's arrangement of Lift Every Voice and Sing, also known in the Black community as the Black National Anthem. Now this is a song I grew up with and have always loved. And I particularly love Roland's arrangement of it. I think it is so exquisite, but it is the profound lyrics that so eloquently explain the beauty and the trials and tribulations of the Black American and the hope for the future. Now, because I was singing the Black National Anthem, I thought I would just ask some of my Black opera singing friends to come sing it with me. And they so graciously gave up their time and their voices and their talent. And I'm so grateful. I thank each and every one of them. I wish I could have had more. But since I called on them, you are in for a treat. I have some of the best opera singers that have ever graced any stage. I have legends, current stars, and upcoming stars. So I'm gonna take off my purple robe and I'm gonna join them in the chorus. So I hope you enjoy the Purple Robe Song Series presents Lift Every Voice and Sing. <laughs> Lift every voice 
That piece is just stunning. Um, if you know me, you might know that I have a pretty thin hem repertoire. But that hem is amazing, and it is one um, that I love, that I know. And their voices together collectively are incredible. So thank you for sharing that selection with us, Joe. So as we close today, we thank you for your continued support of Columbine. Thank you for the way you continue to call each other, to pray for each other, to show up and connect. Um, you truly are being the church, even as we have no building. It reminds us we don't have to have a building to be the church. And so thank you for all the ways you show up. You can continue to give online um, through sending checks to the church, also through texting. So we so appreciate your support in this time. Um, and we hope that you feel our support as well. Um, if you need a connection with a staff or pastor, feel free to call us or email us at any point. We are so happy to connect with you. So now hear the benediction. My friends, this great and gracious God invites us to experience love, grace, liberation, and freedom. And not only to live in that, but to live that out. And so we pray that we would be people that extend this generous message to all for all of time. My friends, go in peace, live in peace. Have a great week. We are with you.